welcome everyone to another episode of Cherish TV. We are women from five different backgrounds. We have different stories, different journeys, and we are here to bring you a different view. Well, fun. We don't always agree, but what we it's can true. agree on is the fact that we all want to make the world a better place. It's true. So we're going to have some fun today, girls. I want to introduce you to my co-host, the sparkly and beautiful Emma. Hello. Anastasia, darling, always great to have you here. The voice of wisdom. Beautiful Miss Ashley is back. And Brianna, can I just say, you look gorgeous. Gorgeous today. You're glowing. I tell you what, you are working that dress. How far along are you there with baby number four? 25 weeks. Woo. 25 weeks. And guess what, friends? It's another girl. Yes. It's another girl. Four I'm girls. one of five. But I want to say how stunning you look. Thank Pregnant. You. you look so, so beautiful. Yes. I was telling the girls uh, <laughs> as we were leading up to the show here, when I was pregnant, I looked like a beanbag with eyes. <laughs> now, I was one of those people that just Not put possible. on a ton yeah. of weight. No, I'm telling you. Even after I had my last baby, I would walk into Starbucks with her in the car seat, little carrier, and people would ask me when I was having the baby. No. Oh, just don't ask. Just assume. Just don't. Assume. I'm like, don't. How are you holding the baby. <laughs> don't. Why would I be walking around with a child if I was about to have another child? <laughs> oh my god. So I don't know. How did you guys? You like you're a little bit offensive, Breezy, because at this point in my pregnancy, I was like that girl from Willy Wonka. You know, the blueberry girl. What was her name? Was it? Uh, yeah. Was, like, yeah. Violet. 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 You're turning violet. Yes. violet? Yes. I, it was, so this, I'm like, dang, Breezy. Wow. Wow. Well, I had FedEx it. man still asking me when I was due three no. months after giving birth. So Two twins, by the way. Yeah, yes. You gave birth to yes. twins. So yes. you're allowed a little pooch. In fact, yeah. you're allowed a pooch. Come on. Can we just say, yeah. nobody yeah. expects you, you <laughs> to have the same set of abs that you had before you had babies. Yes. I think we just need to yes. stop it because we see all these women on magazine covers and they pop out a baby and then they've got like six pack Eight abs. Pack. And a string bikini. Fake news, I say. Yeah. Fake news. Well, yeah. so onesie swimsuits are back. Onesie That's swimsuits. They, they are life to me. I've never known anything else. Yeah, big news. <laughs> well, we're going to head into our first topic right now. And uh, we're going to be talking along the lines of depression. And I know it's not a fun topic, but I don't want to shy away from these really important issues that are facing yeah the men and women of our world. I was reading a statistic just recently that says 20%, now that's a huge majority mm. of Americans have been medically diagnosed. So not just those who are saying they're depressed, but those who have a medical diagnosis from a wow. physician uh, saying that they have been that they have depression. And also interestingly enough, since 1987, there has been a 450% increase Wow. of people who are being diagnosed with depression. So we're looking at a worldwide epidemic. Right. It is literally attack an attack on the mental health of the people of the world. Yeah. So this is worth us digging into and giving a little Absolutely. bit of time to and a little bit of conversation to. So, um, beautiful Emma, I want to throw to you on this one. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm actually really excited we're talking about this because uh, you know we're pastors at a church and a couple of weeks ago we did a night specifically on this topic for women that were dealing with depression to you know come out and have some ministry. And we were overwhelmed with the amount of women that actually came yeah. out and it really sort of was like, wow, this is actually something women are really dealing with. So yeah. we hear that stat like 20% and it can easily be just something we just hear but that means like one in five people this is their story this is something that oh, wow. they are on a journey to overcome and yeah. I actually looked more into the stats so it's one in six men that are dealing with this but it's actually one in four women wow. that have a medical diagnosis so it's depression. more common amongst the women than it is the men yes yeah. and, and what's even I think even something more to talk about is in our youth so even under 18 year olds the prevalence now of yeah. even kids being diagnosed mm. with That's depression true. is getting higher and higher so I really think just as, as women this is a conversation that needs to be talked about because it's obviously something the world is talking about right and, you know, I know uh, in that, on that night, uh, I had a lot of women just really uh, confused about why they were struggling because for a lot of women, it doesn't have much to do with the circumstances of their life. Those circumstances, I'm sure, don't help. But a lot of it is just sometimes they get in this funk that they can't break out of. And right. it's hard because they've got people around them that say, well, come on, just snap out of it. And they're feeling like they can't snap out of mm. it. So I just uh, was doing a little bit of research. Like, it is, uh, it is amazing. There is almost, uh, they reckon, 6% of women medicated on antidepressants. 
Um, six percent. Six percent. So it's, okay. it's rising and rising, but uh, on high level antidepressants, like actually to a point where it would almost be like a clinical diagnosis of depression. So that's more than just having the blues. This is like right. a, like a psychological psychiatric condition that these women are dealing with. So I kind of looked into it and I'm like, okay, so what is some of the reasons the doctors are saying that you know this is a, a, an epidemic and are they calling it an epidemic? Mm. Um, and they're saying these are some of the reasons. So it's uh, technology. I know we talked a little bit about yeah, that last in our week. last episode. Yeah. But because of technology, even though we have more followers than ever, I feel we have less friends than yes, ever. So right. people yeah. are dealing with the consequences of being isolated and of being a lonely. lack of real connection. A lack of real yeah, connection. Right. Just saying, you know what? I'm having a tough day, so there's no ability to kind of do life like with each other. Well, like I'm so thankful for you, ladies, because I know when I'm having a bad day, I'm able. We've to got actually someone to call and just you know speak life when I need it, and just you know yeah. help me see the bigger picture um, at the end of the day. So that's a big one. I think we can all agree, and even with our kids, you know, even our kids are becoming more and more isolated. Well, I think well, it's because of, as well, that so many of our kids are on, like, social looking, media. yeah, social media, and they see other highlights, and they see other people's lives running after things that are so awesome, and they, it kind of repeats that cycle of feeling heavy, Well, it, well, it makes you feel depressed when you can go through, and you're seeing everybody's highlight yeah. reel, you're seeing the best parts right. of everybody's day, right. and you're thinking, I had a crap day, my day right. sucked, <laughs> and I think with every scroll, we can despise our own lives mm, totally. even more. And the right. thing about social media is it's, by and large, a lie. Right. You know, we, we don't know if what's being advertised is true. We don't know if right. that's the reality or that's just what people want you to see. So we're seeing this social disconnect. People have tons of photos but no memories because we've reduced everything wow. to wow. what yeah. can I Brilliant. Instagram for the day to make the whole world think I look awesome. And then what that does is it creates a narrative in the lives of other people my gosh, everybody's having Don't fun with me. More and more people are just getting so isolated. So though mm. everything is seemingly social and public, you can do that in isolation. Yeah, totally. Sitting at home on your couch by yourself. I mean, yeah. We were created to do life with each other. You know, the Bible says it's not good that man would do life alone. That's why yeah. it was Adam and Eve, because he knew, you know, we were better together. So right, right, I know for right. me, I'm really passionate about continuing to, you know, be invested in having great female relationships and relationships in my life. So I'm not, you know, in that place of isolation where I can't. But what's interesting, it isn't just isolation. So uh, this, mm. you know, was convicting yeah. for me. Eating bad food, because I think it's Ooh. more and more easy for now, convenient food. We kind of need McCain. Cheetos, Cheetos. I know, Cheetos. I know. So apparently Chick-fil-A yeah, is not I'm helping not my life, which I want to disagree with. But yeah. because of uh, eating, eating uh, I think has taken over the years, particularly I would say over the last 20 years as we've gone more and more convenient. Preservatives. Yeah. More preservatives and that's a direct correlation. So I do they say what you should be eating in order to feel happy? Because it's easier to say it's our food. Right. But what, so if someone's out there and they're living off fast food or even just kind of grabbing stuff on the go and not right. thinking about their nutrition, what things should they be eating? Like good whole... I love that I'm the spokesperson You need this. to be. Yeah, tell us. <laughs> so I would say it's the, it's the you know, fresh, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, mm -hmm. but things in moderation. You know, I know I can speak to myself. Like, it's so easy to eat the whole bag of Oreos because they come in such a big pack now. I blame Costco. Really, <laughs> they are the real ones Costco. that fall here. We but, blame they you. are the reason for this epidemic. But I feel like... Because Although Costco is almost I becoming know. the number one organic... organic. I know, shout out to Costco. Yes. Right, right. So, yes. We, yeah. Sorry. But what I mean is we Sorry, can buy Costco. everything. Yeah, we love Costco. Oh my goodness, it's my, my jam. But um, I mean, like when I buy things now, I buy it in so much. Involved. I'm having to relearn. How, you know what is Yeah, what is an appropriate amount? You right. go to restaurants these days. It's like they give you enough food for ten people. And you're like, don't mind if I do, you know? <laughs> right. So learning, oh, yeah. I think, to not only just eat the right types of food, but the right amounts of food. Yeah. I know that's a Portion journey control. I'm on right now, and I think that, to me, I always knew what was right to eat, but even too much of something can be a bad thing. So just learning. So, so what about the person, though, when they're hearing this, they're thinking, wow, they're really trite, shallow answers to a very real problem. You're telling me right. if I eat better and I stay off social media, however, I think that is very key, some of us need to shut down our social media and stay off social media for right. what it triggers on the inside of us, a feeling of, I don't know, enhanced mm. FOMO. The whole world yeah, is right, having right, fun right. and I'm not, my life sucks, everybody else is having a great old time. But what's some real, like, you know, well, like for these a, people? This is a complex issue. I think we yes. would be silly to make it if you, you know, you eat better and you exercise. stay off, you know, thing. But let's talk about it. It's actually say lack of exercise, lack of sleeping right. So this mm -hmm. is a big one too. I know for me, like, how often do I go to bed on my phone? And I don't know if anyone else oh. does this. I get into a black 
a black hole when I Google search. Like, I wanted to find out one thing and then it's three hours oh, later oh, and I'm 100%, over here. I'm like, it's 1am, I need to go to bed. Yeah. More Netflix binging, I blame that a lot. So I'm going to bed later and later because I'm distracted when it's actually having an Man, effect. Man, reading, reading yes. is, you know, would probably be a good... Yes, yeah, writing it down. Solution. But I think even <laughs> instead of taking out something, because you, you're telling someone to take something that is numbing the pain, that's numbing things right. in their world, right. taking it out isn't going to help in anything unless you're filling it with something, with something else. Right. And I think, Placing it. especially teenagers and young adults these days, I would say, you know, under 30, there's, there's this epidemic where you don't know how to talk about real stuff with yeah. real people. Wow. Yeah. And you can't talk like, how do I express my emotions and how I feel mm -hmm. and can, come out of them? So we've got yeah. a generation now who has all this pain. Uh, and so they just start numbing with food. They numb with social media. They numb with drugs uh, and drugs entertainment and alcohol yeah. and boys and girls. And you've got this generation who's trying to learn, how do I manage my emotions and how do I connect with real humans? The truth is, most teens are home alone for most of their life. Yeah, um, they don't have uh, really. Uh, they don't. I would shouldn't say they don't have. Some do have, but I would say a lot of teenagers don't have someone to really teach them and walk them through. This is how you're feeling, and this is how you deal with it. Yeah. And so okay. you've got King David in Psalm 61 too. He's like, my heart is overwhelmed. Lord, lead me to the rock that's higher than mm -hmm. I. Mm -hmm. And I think our, you know, that the church is such a powerful tool in being able to teach young people and adults. Because let's let's be truthful. Absolutely. A lot of yes. adults mm -hmm. have emotional levels oh. of a teenager or lower. Hundred <laughs> percent. Um, but it's all because of the numbing. And yeah. so you've got shows like, uh, what is it? 13 Reasons, 13 why, reasons yes. why season two is coming out. It's so crazy. I, did it, any of you guys watch that? Yes. Uh, I watched yes. It, yeah. And it was, I remember feeling, here's the thing I loved about it, is I love that it talked about these issues. It was yes. this girl who went through abuse physically, all these things that are so heavy and so real, and, and honestly, so close to my heart, because I've been through some of those things, but it was so weird because it actually made me feel heavier mm. after I watched it. Because, because the I, solution yes. is end your life. Yeah, and it almost Ooh. felt a little bit, you know, and again, I don't want to step wow. on toes of the creators. I know Selena Gomez is a producer of it, but it actually made me feel like it was almost glorified in a bit, where if I want to be heard, this is what I have to do. When I'm ready to make that decision in my life, I'm going to make right. this tape, and this is how I'm going to be heard. And it almost felt Ooh. a little bit... Um, like famed to do that, to make a decision like that, in my opinion, that from Can watching Can I just it. say, we need to start talking about not ending our lives and it doesn't end in depression. You can have a beautiful, wonderful future. And the yes. way to do that is build genuine relationships with other human beings, yeah. mm -hmm. um, build genuine connections, begin to deal with the root issue of right. what hurt you in the first place. Why did you isolate? Why, what was overwhelming that you were so depressed and couldn't come out of the funk? Mm -hmm. Instead of keeping it within, really expressing it. And, you know, we have a spectrum of emotions for a reason. And, yeah. and emotions can get thrown around. Oh, you know, you cry too much. You There's an extreme right. of everything. Right. But Absolutely. emotions, like you say, it's, a, it's you take the temperature of the soul. And if I'm feeling and feelings are a really thing, then what are we going to do about that? We need right. to talk to other people. Right. We need to get counseling if we need to. We need to build genuine relationships. Yeah, yes. And actually, if you do all the things that we you know, kind of say is trivial or we say, oh, that's just, but actually if you do them all together, yes. if you get out of the house and you exercise and yeah. you breathe fresh air and look on the you beach look at the ocean and it's beautiful, the water. Yeah, exactly, the exercise, can all I, of that. Can I say one more thing? Um, so this is something I want to make sure we're not misunderstanding. We know this is a complex issue and for some people this is actually a chemical imbalance. So yeah. I think the approach to depression, it's all of that. Plus it's really making sure you're having the right conversation with the right mm -hmm. medical professionals, you know, like if I'm a diabetic, I would take insulin to help me. So I think having Having great friends to talk through what is a great solution, but refusing to stay where you're at, like yeah. having always a plan of moving forward. And yes. I think to sort of sum this up too, I think it's also teaching ourselves and teaching yeah. you know, the, the kids we're raising and the friends we're around as well, how to handle our emotions well. I think that's where a bit of a deficit well, of the I think, is. Well, I think you're right on that, Emma, because I think there was a, a huge narrative in the world and even coming out of the church, just get over it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so yes. we were taught to bury yeah. things right. as yeah. opposed to dealing with them correctly. Yes. So there are things that we can't just get over, we have to right. get through. And we get through them, just like mm. you say, with the right relationships yeah. and the right counsel. Exactly. So it's not avoiding it, it's not pushing it down, yeah. because anything you push down is going to bubble out yes. right. at some point. That's totally. why I love church community. Oh, and that's man. why I think it's, it's so words. important. Yeah. And it does save lives. And you're right, it's these little things done in conjunction yeah. with one another that really yes. does 
bring about yeah. and a gradual healing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if people think, man, I'm going to just wake up one morning and all my worries are going to disappear and the clouds <laughs> will part, it really is. It doesn't happen overnight, no. but yes. it will happen yeah. if you take there those important hope. steps. There it. is hope. There is Amen. hope. Yeah. 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 And we can't, I mean, this is a deep, complex issue. We're not going to solve the answers of the right. world with one conversation that lasts 10 minutes yeah. once a week. <laughs> so I would say to you today, have that conversation if you're struggling and dealing with depression, yeah. maybe yeah. even yes. just a few symptoms of it. Don't stay quiet. Don't stay silent. Talk to that good, wise, trusted friend, that yeah. pastor. Right. You know, get some good counsel on this because there is a way through. Yeah. There is. is a way through. Love yes. That. Yeah. That's a big one right there. <laughs> That's a real big one. Okay, so this one's a little lighter. Uh, the next question I want to ask and the next topic I want to bring up for discussion is the issue of drama in our friendships. What? Oh. Let's talk about it. I know Come that on. none of you have ever uh, you know, had no. any experiences with that and you've all been perfect friends and you've had perfect friends. Of course. <laughs> but when you look at the culture in the USA and I dare say around the world, mm. it's, a, it's a culture that is really um, profiting off the climate of drama. Mm -hmm. So we look at our TV shows. So the right. Real Housewives epidemic mm. disease right. that has yeah. gripped definitely very much the USA. And I think I was even just recently in Australia and they've started some franchises over there too. Yeah. Wow. It profits off drama. It exploits drama women's yeah. worst sides. Yeah. So we're seeing this played out on the daily yeah. around the totally. world. Totally. Drama in friendships. Yeah. And so that we're eating, drinking, breathing, sleeping drama and what you look at and what you think about and you obsess about, you're going to bring right. into your own so you world. Right. Yeah. I remember, at least for me, growing up um, in my early teenage years, like right when I got to high school, they released mm -hmm. this show called Laguna Beach, The O.C., oh, yeah. all these shows where they're these gorgeous California people. I was living in Seattle. We're all like, ah, it's raining all the time. So we're like, everyone's oh. wearing black. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and it was so crazy because it's right. interesting they say that the world's profiting off it. And I yeah. think back actually just now, like, I actually started getting an appetite for the drama when I'd watch these girls who were so oh, pretty on TV, these teenagers in high yeah. school, and they would do all these things, and oh my gosh, me and Steven broke up, and all this drama would happen, and it was so weird because I actually, growing up in high school, every single year had a new best friend, and my mom and my friends were like, or my family would be like, wow, you actually always bring a new best friend around. Like, you aren't very consistent. Wow. <laughs> and it was cool because I love that my mom actually pointed that out, and that was one of my favorite things about my mom is that she's so loyal. Yeah. And so for me, I actually was little miss people pleaser. So if my best friend on my sophomore year was like on the dance team, we were doing dance and anyone else who didn't dance was, oh, you guys were so lame. And then it was this whole thing that came out of people pleasing where Every single, I mean, I was in fights, you guys. Listen. What? Like physical fights? Listen, I wasn't oh, always sweet no. and jesus -y. I remember I got in a fight with a girl in an elevator, and I closed the door no so way. I could just wail. <gasps> I know, I'm no. sorry. I would have been I'm so sorry, this is real. I would have avoided listen, you. Exactly, oh yes. 100%. But the, cra the cool thing is, is that it came to a head after I started getting, As you know, it should. Well, yes. <laughs> As I actually started getting kicked out really of school in class. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, I actually found that, like you said, and thank God for people in my life, in my church, that spoke into me, said, Ashley, you need to be consistent or you're going to wow. lose friends and have no friends. And when I had and not a crappy your friends day, in <laughs> you were the girl that slapped me in high school. Probably. I would never. Uh. But the thing is, is that the, the most beautiful thing about it is that looking back to who I was then is not who I am now. And it's so beautiful that God yeah. trusts me with the most incredible, beautiful. intimate conversations yeah. that I have with people. Yeah. yeah. And it's but all because... We don't know how to talk each to each other. I think that's the thing. We are so conversationally and communicatively... Illiterate. Yes. yes. Right. I'm struggling to find the right, right word, but I see it all over and it's so yeah. troubling. Yeah. We don't know how to deal with conflict properly and so that creates drama and we we get a narrative going in our, in our totally. head like oh my gosh and if she says this then I'm going to say that yes. and then if she says this I'm going to say this in return and so we've worked out a and scenario. And that's all in your head because when you go to have the conversation you don't know how. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. And you've got Facebook and Instagram where you can unfollow someone that you just don't like anymore but that's not real world. You can't right. unfollow somebody we just gotta, because they've we offended gotta you. We've got to learn to get on with people through. that we may not necessarily yes. like. And here's the thing you know Ashley. And be civil. Yeah, Ashley spoke about it brilliantly. I think one of the biggest issues is we don't deal with it when we're young. Thank God you had a mother that knew Praise loyalty God. and spoke that into you, but most people don't. And then, and then you grow as an adult, yeah. and you're acting like you did as a teenager because yes. it actually wasn't corrected. Yes. It wasn't Absolutely. shown you know, how to do that. And I had even, you know, not that long ago, a few years ago, um, 
I remember with a, a friend of mine, we were actually really good friends. And then um, I learned from this, texting. So we gotta be really careful. Ah, uh -huh, yes. There are some things to be appropriate for texting, like be there at five and not actually have a conversation over text because you can lose a lot there. You know, where's the emotion? How are you saying that? Yeah. What do you mean? Emojis help with that, I think. So emojis too. <laughs> yeah. Wink, wink. yeah, we do. We need to use emojis. But I remember a, a friend and I, we actually are, uh, our friendship got very strained and, and we were going back and forth on text messaging and what mm. she meant to say and what I heard and vice versa um, was actually like, oh my you gosh, does do she that. think this about yeah. me? Does she think? Lost in translation. And then think, I mean, in that moment, like, thank God, you know, we had enough to just put down our phones and go, hey, let's meet up. Yes. <laughs> let's yeah. chat. Let's talk about it. And we were able to resolve everything. We're like the yeah. best of friends today um, yeah. because of it. But I think that that's, you know, part of our, our problem is these little snippets instead of actually really speaking into the, into the issue. And I also think another angle is um, uh, with women and women versus men when it comes to relationships. Because sometimes women say they got in the fights, you know, in high school or those types of things. So now they don't know or they're fearful of it didn't go well. I tried to build a friendship with a girl yes. and I got hit or whatever. Okay, let's <laughs> That's just, extreme. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. Like, That's extreme. <laughs> We can't forget that. Now. But if that happens, you know, <laughs> on the extreme, but that generally happens. And so then what they do is go, oh, I'm just a tomboy. Oh, I just, all my friends yeah. as women are men. Yeah. Well, because this is we, who I am. Or this that is was me. This is me. Yeah. And the real issue, you'd yeah. probably agree, Brianna, was that it was actually learning how to resolve the conflict or the hurt or the pain. Well, guys are always going to love you because you're a girl and you're cute. And, and so you get away <laughs> with a lot more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh. <laughs> But, but the truth is, like, females, we, we, we kind of sharpen each other, you know? We're, we're feisty we together. We don't have as much patience for each other. <laughs> and, it, and it makes me a better person being around more females. Yeah, but my, a lot of my teenage years, a lot of my guys were, were mainly, I mean, a lot of my friends were just guys. Because there's no one that can be as mean to a woman as, as a, another yes. woman. 100%. That's, That's the truth of it. We are our best friends, each we other's best core. friends, and worst enemies. Yeah. And you know what? I wrote this down because I didn't want to forget it. But I think a lot of the problem is that we are reactors yeah. instead of responders. Wow. Yeah. So we will lash, we will react, as opposed to take a minute, take a gosh darn second. <laughs> think about what's being said. It's true. What is the end goal here? What it. is the win? The win is reconciliation. Right. The win is resolve. The yes. win yes. is peace. The win is not having to walk into a room and be awkward. And wonder. Oh, the word. And I hate that. I yeah. hate it more than anything else. So actually having the uh, thoughtfulness and the restraint yes. to go, you know what, I'm not going to answer back right now. I'm going to think yes. about that. Yeah. And then I'm going to come back with the viewpoint of my end game. My end game yeah. is I want to be your friend. I so let's that, work yeah. that. I think that, um, you know, a really good book is called Boundaries. And I think that because of some of the crisis or conflict or traumas that we have had, it didn't go well, so Absolutely. we don't know how to resolve. But I think if we can learn proper boundaries, like I'm not going to jump into that yeah. situation too quickly yeah. Yeah. and right. then get hurt because of it, right. but actually learn. And there's levels of friendship. Who told us that we have to be best friends right. with I everyone? I want to talk about this. This is so. I'm so passionate about this. So where do we get that idea? You need one person. It's it's, it's always, overwhelming. It's, well, it's overwhel Whoa. overwhelming for that person. You are my be all end all, and you yeah. are the source of right. all my friendship. But it's needs. an insecurity. You're never going to be alone because you've got your bestie next to you. Like the thought of being alone. Well, is I think scary. it's. I just yeah. think it's it's exclusive, <clears throat> and I want more friends, not less. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't yeah. want to put the pressure on anyone to be the best of the best. Yeah. And you've got different friends for different things. Exactly. Right. So like 100%. you know, for Stacey, I do different things than I do with Ashley. They're both my friends, and they, right. they bring out different sides of me, and that's good, and that's healthy. Yeah. And, yeah. And, I think and, having oh. a couple of of friends that you can be raw with mm. and be real with and talk about the real thing, not yeah. deny what's happening, but let's actually talk about it. But then you have your broader circle. Like, I just want to go have fun or I want right. to talk about, you know, fashion or, and it's yeah. all the different pieces make up this huge, wonderful, healthy relationship world yeah, yeah. that, you know, then serves us really I think, well. Yeah. I think that diversity in friendship really oh, serves us well. And we actually have to branch out of our little circles. Right. Yeah. And, and I, your, your world gets so much richer yeah. by right. doing that. And I think, too, even now, I actually err more on the side of, again, just leaning into the Holy Spirit, to be honest, and discerning of these conversations. Because growing up, it was such an easy thing to conform to that person in that conversation yeah. that thank yeah. God for the discernment of, I'm like, man, should I actually say this thing to this person? Is that actually 
gonna Necessary. hinder them? Are they gonna misinterpret mm -hmm. like my heart behind it? And yeah. so for me, it's been an incredible journey where, again, like I've got some of the best friends, but again, like you're saying, is this person for this season or this kind of conversation, maybe they're still struggling in that area. So I'm and actually gonna petty? avoid that. Yeah, is it yes. petty or not? Does uh, it even need yes. to be brought up or is this just something I can do Absolutely. like Taylor Swift and shake off? Yeah. <laughs> and I wanna, before you go there, I wanna ask this question. What do you do if there's a real betrayal? Because we may be talking about things that are just like little insignificant jabs. Right. right. But what if there's a real betrayal in a friendship? How would you approach that? I mean, for me, it's multifaceted. I think it's first acknowledge it's actually happening. Yeah. Don't right. stuff it down. Yeah. Don't pretend it's not going on. It's happened. Yeah. So what has actually happened? And I think, like you said, if you take a moment, two things. One, stand before God. If you are a Christian woman, stand before God and let him highlight what is the, actually the root issue? What's the root problem? Right. Right. And get it down to the one thing. If you have 50 things that you bring to which your friend, which are all the symptoms, which are, which are all right. the symptoms of the actual yeah. hurt and pain, it's too much for any one person to handle. So what's the main issue that really did hurt me and why? If it's a, a big conflict, sometimes you do need to ask one, you know, maybe one other person, like, is this, yes. am, am I crazy or is this valid? Is this something that needs to be discussed? That doesn't always have to happen, but I think bringing in one trusted yeah, wisdom so person, we not, counsel sometimes not just a situations. person that's going to go, they're there. Yeah. I, right. I hate them too. Yeah, like, that's never right going to help anyone. <laughs> go to the person that yeah. you know is going to give you the honest answer. Yes. yes. And then I would say, and then you address the person in a calm way. You can't be at a level 12 sure. and you can't be you know, super angry because that's not gonna bring about a resolve. Yes. And right. if the win is truly a resolve, mm. then we go, okay, let's have an environment. Let's go to an, a, a, a fun place or let's have a quiet coffee or something like that where it's a good environment. And then um, I know that's what's worked for me often is um, asking the question and getting permission to have the hard conversation. I love it. Like, hey, you know what, a couple, you know, a week ago when this happened, there were some real pains that hurt me. Can, can we talk about it? Right. Yeah. Because then you find out, are they in a place where they're also wanting to deal with it too? Right. And then you can have the real conversation about the real thing. And I think then real resolve can happen and, and we get the win. And I would yeah. say this too, give each other a little bit of grace. Yeah. No yeah. one's going to communicate it in please. the most perfect way. <laughs> right, right. And we all got junk in the trunk. Like, we all have oh, our yeah, own we, ish. Yeah. And so we got to give a little bit of room yeah, for the fact that be it may not be communicated perfectly. I agree with that. And I think it's worth mentioning, too, to all our Christian brothers and sisters out there. And I know we have people from all walks of life watching. But if you're a Christian... Actually, the Bible doesn't even give us permission to stay in unforgiveness yeah. Yeah. and estranged. The Bible says that wherever it's up to you, so my responsibility, not about everybody else, right. true. but where it's up to me, be at peace with yeah. all men. And in fact, Amen. Jesus says, you know what, I don't even want you to bring your gift to the altar if you have something against wow. your brother. Wow. First go repair that relationship and then come bring your gift. And it's interesting because it's like God the Father is saying, you know what, I love that you're bringing me presents. Yeah. I love that you made me a tie in kindergarten class <laughs> and gave it to me on Father's Day, but I don't want that. Would you be friends with your brother? I love it. Yeah. You know what right. the best gift to me as a parent? I, my kids could give me gifts all day long. The greatest gift as a mother is knowing my kids love one another. Love They're that. working out their differences. If they right. argue, they forgive, they shake hands and make up. So we've got to get over our own stubborn pride on who's right and just rather do the right thing. Yes. What is the right yes. thing? Well said. The yes. right yes. thing to do is make peace wherever it's up to you. You, you make that thing right. React. I love you that. Gotta you got to do that. it. Yeah. We've got enough re reactors in the world. Yeah. I like that you said too, like we can only control ourselves. Right. So I find when I approach situations and I've spent a little time and I'm calm about it, I don't have to rise to the other person's level of emotion. Right. I only can control what's in my hands to control and communicate that and then let it be yeah, right. and right. forgive, right. like you said, and move forward regardless of how they handle themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that's it. Awesome. You can only be yeah. responsible for you. And if we're all responsible for ourselves, oh my gosh, yeah. the yeah, world will be world. a beautiful place. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yes. Well, we are coming to an end of this episode of Cherish TV. On our next episode, we are going to be doing the very controversial topic, especially if you live in Southern California, of a hospital birth versus a Here home birth. Oh, oh, get ready, get ready. <laughs> Laws are going to come out. Our beautiful homegrown, oh our organic girl, Michaela Ray, is going to be back, and it's going to be.
to be a duel <laughs> that you will not want to miss next week. Also, we're going to talk about the competition and comparison Great. between women. There is so much of it out mm. there. Why do we feel the need to compete with our friends? Great. We're going to be discussing that yeah. at large. But we want to say goodbye for now. We love you, beautiful people, yeah. and we love bringing you a different view. Have an amazing day. See you next week. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her worth is far above rubies. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household. She girds herself with strength and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. Whoa!